In recent years, the number of applicants for the civil service exam in mainland China, referred to as CSE, has been increasing. This year, the number of applicants for CSE exceeded 2 million, a record high. Civil servants have high social status, various benefits, and high hidden income, no need to work overtime, and don't have to worry about being fired. For young people struggling under the working modes of 996 or 007 in private companies, passing the CSE and becoming civil servants will allow them to lie flat comfortably. The registration for the CSE in mainland China in 2022 ended on October 24th. The 2022 CSE plans to recruit 31,242 people, and 2.123 million passed the examination qualification review. The average competition ratio is 68 to 1, which is much higher than last year's 61.26 to 1. The hottest position is the first level chief officer of the Tibet Nari Prefecture Postal Administration. The plan is to recruit only one person, but the number of applicants reached over 20,000, and over 19,000 people have passed the qualification review. The number of applicants for the CSE exceeded 1 million for the first time in 2009 and has been increasing year by year for more than 10 years since then. In the past three years, it has increased rapidly. In 2019, nearly 1.38 million people passed the qualification review. 1.44 million people passed the review in 2020, and a total of 1.58 million people passed the review in 2021. The popularity of CSE reflects three issues. First, it reflects young people's view of career choices. That is, they are more inclined to relatively stable jobs within the governmental system. Second, it reflects the disappearance of many good jobs in China due to the withdrawal of foreign companies, which has reduced the employment opportunities for young people. Third, due to the economic downturn, the employment situation of young people is quite bleak, and a large number of college and university graduates cannot find jobs, so the CSE becomes a very good opportunity for them. Analyzing the current employment situation in China, jobs can be roughly divided into two categories, namely jobs within the system and jobs outside the system. Jobs in the CCP and government agencies, public institutions, and state-owned enterprises are called work within the system but do not include the large number of temporary workers employed by these units. The remaining jobs, such as working in foreign or private companies and self-employment, are called out-of-system work. In 2016, China's Human Resources and Social Security Ministry announced that the number of civil servants reached 7.16 million, and some scholars have projected that including all the taxpayer-supported employees of public institutions and state-owned enterprises, the total number of public employees exceeds 70 million. In most Chinese people's eyes, the system is very good. Jobs are stable and decent, with secured income and high social status. Data released by China's National Bureau of Statistics also gives corroborating evidence. In 2019, the average annual salary of employees in urban non-private units nationwide was 90,501 RMB, while the average annual salary of people employed in urban private units nationwide was only 53,604 RMB. This year, the number of college graduates has reached a new record of 9.09 million. For most college graduates, the system seems to have endless charms and becoming a member of the system has become the first or even the only choice in choosing a career. In recent years, more and more fresh graduates from top universities and first-class majors and graduates returning from overseas have joined the CSE hype. A Peking University report shows that more than 75% of Peking University graduates entered the system in 2019, and in 2015, this ratio was about 50%. In March this year, Peking University received the largest personal donation of 1 billion RMB since its establishment. The donor was Li Yongxin, a Peking University alumnus and chairman of the Zhonggong Education Group. Zhonggong Education Group is the largest listed company in the education industry in China's A-share market, and its main business is CSE training. At a time when the education and training industry is fully suppressed, and almost the entire industry is paralyzed, Zhonggong education has been able to operate well, 
which also highlights the popularity of CSE and the support from the state level. But it's not that easy to get a job in the system. The highest level in the system are civil servants. If you want to become a civil servant, you have to take the CSE. The first step is to pass a strict qualification review. In addition to the basic requirements, such as being younger than 35, a bachelor's degree or above, and a local household registration, many positions require that applicants must be members of the Communist Party. In addition, CSE applicants have to pass a strict political review. Not only are religious beliefs not accepted, but even if the applicant's immediate or close relatives are engaged in activities that endanger China's security at home or abroad, if the applicant cannot draw clear boundaries with them, they will fail the political review. If there are dissidents or Falun Gong practitioners among relatives of the applicant, it is also very difficult to pass this review. As we mentioned earlier, a postal administration job in the remote Nari area of Tibet has more than 20,000 people applying. It is because this job is the only one without any restrictions, such as household registration, majors, political status, etc. The only threshold is that bachelor's degree or above is required. Thus, many young people meet the qualifications to apply for the exam. The reason why the requirements for this position are so loose is related to a strategy of the CCP to strengthen its rule in Tibet. In an interview with Radio Free Asia, the Tibetan government in exile and the representative of the Tibetan administration in Taiwan, Gesang Jiancan, pointed out that there are only more than 3 million people in the Tibet Autonomous Region. The Chinese government sends about 60 million Han people to Tibet each year for tourism and provides many employment opportunities to them. In addition, the CCP sent Tibetan university graduates to work in state-owned enterprises in Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangdong. They send Tibetans to work in various provinces in the name of eliminating poverty, and in the name of promoting employment, it is actually to disperse Tibetans to Han provinces, break away from Tibetan culture, and then achieving the goal of assimilating Tibet. This is a policy that the CCP has consistently pursued. If you can be admitted as a civil servant in the Tibet Autonomous Region, you can usually get a salary of 6,000 to 8,000 RMB a month. There are also other allowances, which are all visible income. In addition, through participating in the management of infrastructure construction, one can achieve hundreds of thousands or even millions of hidden income, since Tibet is remote and more difficult to supervise. These make Tibet's civil servant positions very popular. Nari Prefecture belongs to a remote rural area with a population of only about 120,000. There are very few colleges and university graduates every year. 70 to 80 percent of applicants for local civil service positions are Han Chinese from other regions. Secondly, it is necessary to pass a highly competitive examination. Many good jobs have a competition ratio of more than 100 to 1. Even so, for young people who have gone through countless examinations since childhood, this is not an obstacle that can stop them from applying to take the CSE. Even if they pass the highly competitive written test and interview, they still have to pass a physical examination. Many people will be eliminated in this step due to various strange reasons. In 2013, a young man in Xiangxi Autonomous Prefecture of Hunan Province won the first place in the written examination and interview in the CSE, but failed to pass the physical examination because of acne on his face. But the job he applied for was Internet Police Officer of the Public Security Bureau. In fact, as early as 2004, Hunan Province also imposed physical characteristics restrictions on female applicants for civil servants. For example, it stipulated that breasts must be symmetrical. If they're not, even if the person passes the exams and have both the ability and political integrity, they will be rejected. In addition to the examination, there is another way to become a civil servant, which is getting approval by the heads of government agencies, and this has given rise to various corruptions and scandals. Recently, the second trial of Xu Yan, a special police officer in Guannan County, Jiangsu Province, for extorting nine officials has sparked a public outcry. According to mainland media reports, Xu Yan, who was born in 1994, has had improper sexual relations with government officials since she was 19, 
and then demanded economic compensation from officials on the grounds that she was pregnant. From this, she successfully claimed over 3.7 million RMB. The men involved included two deputy directors of the local public security bureau, two police station directors, a hospital vice president, a government agency labor union chairperson, a primary school principal, and two other civil servants. In this case, Xu Yan's original intention was only to obtain a status within the system. Xu, who came from an ordinary family, got a job as a special police officer in 2013. The so-called special police officer is actually just a temporary worker at a police station, and not actually a member of the system. The salary is also far lower than those within the system. In order to be able to become a full-time employee within the system, Xu Yan did not hesitate to sell her body to various related officials or personnel. However, the young girl still underestimated the shamelessness of the officials. The deputy chief of the police station and the director of the police station completely regarded Xu Yan as a plaything. Until Xu Yan was arrested, she was still an outside system special police officer. This was Xu Yan's true motive for blackmailing the officials. Xu Yan was first sentenced to 13 years in prison and a 5 million RMB fine. The case caused a lot of shock on social media, and on October 15th, the sentence was changed in the second trial reduced to 7 years in prison and a fine of 300,000 RMB. It is worth mentioning that Guannan County is a poor county with an average annual income of less than 50,000 RMB per capita. The average amount blackmailed from these officials was 400,000 RMB. Among them, the director of the police station surnamed Sun was blackmailed up to 1.08 million. Needless to say, everyone knows where this money came from. This shows how corrupted the CCP officials are and how crazy an ordinary person can get in order to enter the system. Why are civil servant jobs so popular? And how many benefits are there for being a civil servant? Let's summarize. First, civil servants have high social status. Many things in China cannot be solved through normal means. Whoever holds the power means possessing social resources and privileges. On October 28th, a netizen tweeted that a special police officer uttered some crazy words, saying, I want to pass the civil service exam so I can ride on all your heads and poop on you. Otherwise, my 10 years of hard study will be in vain. We can see the arrogance here is very obvious. Second, work pressure is low. In some private enterprises, there are performance assessments every week and overtime is quite often, with 996 being called the norm. The working hours within the system are generally fixed, and overtime will be fully compensated. 3. High salaries and benefits, as well as considerable great income. In addition to salary, civil servants also have a provident fund contribution from the employer, performance awards, civilization awards, and many other bonuses. Adding everything up, civil servants with an average annual income exceeding 200,000 RMB is common in Shanghai, Guangdong, and other developed areas. In the Public Security Bureau and the court system, civil servants' average salaries are much higher. An income of more than 300,000 is very common. Even in third and fourth tier cities, salaries are around 4,000 RMB per month. Plus various bonuses, it increases to about 6,000 RMB per month, equating to an average annual salary of 72,000 RMB. But in China, there are 600 million people with a monthly salary of less than 1,000 RMB. In addition to the above, civil servants will receive various gifts and living allowances on New Year's, Mid-Autumn Festival, and other holidays. Usually, some units will also give employees clothing, rice, cooking oil, and other household items. All of this adds up to almost 10,000 US dollars a year. In recent years, High-end and low-priced canteens for civil servants have also been exposed many times. On March 18th this year, a netizen filmed the situation of a civil servant canteen in Shanghai's Huangpu district. The canteen not only has a wide variety of dishes, but the prices are almost one-tenth that of ordinary restaurants. Even so, the civil servants don't have to pay a single penny, because the company will recharge their cards every month. In addition, single employees are generally provided with free dormitories. If they buy apartment units, 
Civil servants from some government agencies will also receive discounts. 4. In view of the above-mentioned benefits of being a civil servant, it also brings them a big advantage, that is, it's easier for a male civil servant to find a girlfriend. With the current serious imbalance between men and women in China, the profession of civil servants is very popular among girls' parents. Even if a male civil servant has no house or car, it's not difficult to find a girlfriend from a local middle-class family. 5. Civil servants do not need to pay pension insurance, while ordinary people must pay Social Security for at least 15 years to be eligible for retirement pensions. Even so, the pension received by civil servants after retirement is much higher than that of ordinary people. These are only the benefits for the average civil servant, but for those who have reached a higher level, the benefits are countless. We've previously done a special report on this, so we won't go into it in this video. Of course, the popularity for the CSE this year is not only because of the temptation of welfare and social status, but also because of the difficulty for young people to find jobs. In the second half of this year, the layoffs in education and training, finance, and real estate have not yet subsided. Recently, industry leaders such as ByteDance, KE Holdings, and Global Egro E-Commerce have also reported layoffs. The withdrawal of many large foreign companies such as Samsung has worsened China's unemployment issue. At this time, the CSE is undoubtedly a lifesaver for many young people. No matter how fierce the competition gets, they would try. If they pass, they'll be set for their entire life, so why not?